pay attention to me. Okay. <laughs> it's my diva time. I'm sorry. Okay. It's my diva time. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. So, uh, you've been a trainer for how long? Uh, I started working as a trainee, uh, as a trainer in May 10, 2011. My name is Alicia Valencia. I'm a community trainer for California Connects. And uh, why do you do this? Um, as a, ever since I was young, I've always had people come to me and ask me, like, what do I do in this? You seem to really know how to answer or help guide. And um, so I was impelled to, like, help people. And so I guess what I could say is that it's been a calling of mine, and it comes like sec well, first nature. I don't have to think about it. It just automatically comes. Um, I'm a real people-oriented person. I'm always out there wanting to just give everything that I know because I know that I lack that um, while growing up, and I had to like find it myself, and I feel that I could provide that guidance that I didn't have it when I needed it. So, The first time I was exposed, when I was about a fourth grader, I want to say, and we started like um, typing and they started teaching us the basics of typing through like games so it was like, like fun I was like oh wow I didn't know you could play such game on a computer screen and um, I didn't get much interest in it in the sense that like I initially just was amazed by it but since I didn't have the resources at home or I never not even in our public library did they have like a computer so the only time I was able to use it it was during um, school purposes and so I think in high school was more when I was like I started learning Word and I started learning Excel and the different ways you could do presentations PowerPoint and that intrigued me of course and so of course um, continuing my education. So you've been training how long? Oh, not long. I just uh, started training actually in July of this year. I'm new. Yeah, I arrived up there in mid-April and started training in July. What's your background? Uh, um, well, most recently uh, I was a teacher over in the uh, San Jose area. I was an adult ed teacher for a few years. I was in university over there at the National Hispanic University, trying to become a teacher. Um, I've been a trainer for nine months, and it's been it's been something different. I've always done community work. I've always worked for the community. Um, I am a community regional development major. I just graduated from college about a year ago, a little bit over a year, and I picked that major just because I love helping people. Um, and the reason why I'm a community trainer is because I feel like I have to help. And it's not just the fact of helping someone how to use a computer, it's the fact of being able to help those in need, especially in the Central Valley. I'm born and raised in the Central Valley, born and raised in my county where I'm teaching the classes. And I feel like I had to move back and help those in need, especially the Spanish speaking because I come from there. You know, I am first generation, my parents were migrant workers. I was a five year old teaching them things as, as a child, you know, hey, this is what they're saying at the meeting, this is what they're telling me that I have to do. So when I had to teach, when I had to teach this somebody similar to my parents, it just, I feel a better connection. And I feel that that's why I do such a the job I do in my county. You know, I have a connection with my community. I don't give up on them. I always tell them, please, you have to have that faith in you. I have faith on you. Trust yourself. I already trust you as it is. You know, I'm here working for you. I'm not going to give up on you. Don't give up on yourself. Well, my name is Diego Villafana, and one moment that I identified as um, making me special in what I do was when a trainee that came in that had no experience with the computer um, and didn't know what she could achieve uh, with the computer. After taking the, the class, or the training series, she was able to email her teacher. And, and she did this kind of without telling me. I mean, I, you know, I didn't know what level of experience my trainees have when they come in. But I usually find out throughout the class. And I was teaching, you know, how to use email, and she busts out her email address for her daughter's teacher. Now, she didn't know how to use an email address or email account. 
Um, but she knew this was an email address, and you know, she knew that there was a way to communicate with a teacher. But once I showed her how to use an email account, you know, she sent an email. Until, until, she didn't tell me until, until after the series was over. She was like, before I came here, I had no idea how to use the internet. I was scared. I, I didn't know how to you know, use email. And now after these classes, I was able to email my, my daughter's teacher. And I found out she was doing bad in school. Or she, she needed some help. And, and I thank you for that because now I'm going to be helping my daughter get her grades up. And to me, that, that still sticks in my head. I mean, I get a lot of thanks. And a lot of people that, you know, they, they, they're always grateful for things that, the patience that we have, that's one thing I hear, and you know, for the things that I show, but it's those kind of stories that, you know, I really feel like I made a difference. Now, of all the computer programs that are out there, uh, things you can do on a computer, what is the one thing that seems to really, really bring joy? I think Skype communicating with their families. Yeah, well, I think the one they jump most at is Skype um, because a lot of them want to be able to communicate with their relatives, and mostly in Mexico. Communicating with their families, I've heard a story where it was just, I could, I could see that happening. She just, she put a picture in my head. Um, she, she told me the first time she ever Skyped with her sister that she hadn't seen in 20 years. She said she hadn't seen her sister in 20 years and they Skyped. And she, she said she just started crying. And, and to me, that was just a really nice story. I mean, not because she was crying, but just because she was so happy to be able to see her family again. And, and that she learned this technology that she could use for something so beneficial and so beautiful to you know, be able to communicate with her sister, um, her nephews, and see them. I, I just did this a couple of days ago. I sent my student down and I said, no, you turn on the computer. It's a laptop. It's my laptop. You do it all. I'm, I'm just going to be over here. Yeah, you get on Skype. You hit that button. And she she'd do everything. And then, and then I said, see that button that says connect with this guy here? Uh, Diego, I guess it is. And she hit it. And then here's Diego comes on. Her face is here and his face is here. And uh, she says, hi, I'm Carmen. <laughs> he didn't know Carmen from anybody. She's not a trainer. But anyway, he's very good. And so he talked to her in Spanish, of course, and I'm, I speak Spanish too, but um, she was delighted. And so was the other one. The other one would go, let me talk, let me talk. And they were delighted to see this. He was only in Bakersfield, and we're up there, not a long ways, but they saw the potential, and they were very much amazed at that. She's like, Sonia, I know there's no computers, because I had a full class. She's like, I need to talk to you. I said, okay. Step aside. I was like, oh, how can I help you? You know, she's like... I saw my mom after 15 years. I've talked to my mom every weekend, but I saw her face. I saw her wrinkles. I saw everything about her that I just only picture and saw in pictures. And for me, I'm just like, I'm getting tear eyed. But seeing her eyes tear up and seeing that, I'm like, it's, I'm not just teaching computers. I'm connecting people. And to me, I was like, wow, I felt good. I put a mom and a daughter together. It was about 15 years ago when I was growing up that nobody had the patience for my parents. Nobody was able to help them. There was, not, there was no programs, especially here in the Central Valley. There's nothing. And then when you go to a program, let's say, for instance, week or any kind of public service, you know, the person helping you behind the desk is English speaking. And how better can you get when I'm Spanish speaking? Born and raised in the Central Valley, first generation college graduate you know I'm so young I have the energy and the passion that it's needed for this to happen what is your most fulfilling moment as an instructor not having the capacity to teach them not having the words not having the, the experience on teach them or not knowing the way to do it because I am not a teacher so I don't have that background so for me when somebody goes and start asking me questions about my classes and they talk to me I don't know how to write and read not even in Spanish or Punjabi or English 
my heart to start like beating faster because I know that person will be a challenge. But I like to, I like challenges. And for me, it's like my goal to make that person to start reading and writing. I don't know if it if will be in Spanish or English, but learning something. And learning how to do something in the computer. And that is like, you know, that is like my goal, that is my passion, to make that person learn. Sometimes I don't mind to stay later. I don't mind to get there early and ask them to come early or stay later and we can practice. I've had two students who have had, I'd call learning disabilities, and since I just got out of the university for teaching, I can't understand what learning disabilities is. I'm not making it up, you know. Uh, they really have learning disabilities. And so, um, actually maybe three of them. One of them was illiter kind of illiterate, half literate. She's the one I called. Uh, another one was just, uh, he had learning disabilities. He just couldn't learn very fast. And then this other lady, she was in a coma, she said, for six months. And uh, so it affected her whole ability to learn. She says, I'm very slow, so please go slowly. Well, in a class, you know. So, uh, but I was able to go slow enough to where I could include her and all the other students. So um, I think that was, uh, I didn't want to drop anybody along the way. And so um, calling them, having them come in for a special session. But the other one, she graduated on time. I had, um, had a lady in one of my classes. She has no children. She's, um, she's married, but she was never able to have kids. She worked, at a, she worked out in the fields. And she took my class. And she was always frustrated, always mad that she couldn't learn. She's like, I just can't learn, you know? She would say, she would use the word in Spanish, I'm just dumb. So I stopped her and I talked to her and I told her, you're not done. If you send me to the fields to do this job, what you do, I won't be able to do that. Because I'll be dumb in that position. You're not dumb, you're new. You're learning. That's a process of learning. You need to have confidence in yourself. And she looked at me and I remember she looked at me like, I just gave her like a little push, you know, that motivation into life. And she looks up at me because she was sitting down and she's like, wow. Thank you. And before she left, she apologized. I'm sorry for being such a drag in your class, for always bringing you down. I told her, no, people like you remind me that I need to keep on helping. So my first graduates have only been out about three weeks, uh, and I haven't heard back that they have. I, I do have a few that are not employed. On the other hand, the woman who I said who has a coma, she does have a business. And she's going to use this to develop a website. So we, f we went to, uh, did a little semi-module on setting up websites for free to start with, you know. And so uh, actually both the, the other student too said, I want to do it too. I want to have my own business. And so I said, okay, here we go. So uh, hopefully that one, her business will expand and the other one will maybe set up a business. I, I don't know. I know that sometimes it's not just about teaching them the computer. You open so many doors to them. You teach them that they can learn anything. It not, does not matter if they're 19 or 71 years old. They can learn. And that's what I like, that they tell me, oh wow, Sonia, I can really learn. It's not just about computers. I can get my GED. I can become a USA citizen. I can do all these things. And that, for me, I accomplish. A lot of people who go and sit behind a desk don't get that feeling, and I do. <laughs> I get that appreciation of the community, and I just, I just think it's wonderful.